Commissioner Reading, thank you for supporting the Truffle 100 for the fourth year in a row. You are almost a co-founder of the Truffle 100. You are a central and, should I say, prominent figure of the European IT industry. Therefore, the market players expect a lot from you and from the set of actions and plans that you can implement. We would like to ask you a few questions on those actions and plans. Although the EU weighs more than the US in economic terms, the European IT and particularly the software industry is lagging way behind its US counterparts and shows no tangible sign of catching up. It seems that there is very little room for the IT and software industry in the bailout and recovery plans that are being implemented by the member countries. Many are of the opinion that the emphasis is on the traditional industries such as automotive, steel or the banking sector. As the European IT Commissioner, what is your action plan to curb the trend and emphasize IT in public spending? It's indeed to keep abreast of the global race and to stay world class in high tech sectors. Europe needs to raise its game in the ICT and it also needs to increase the intensity and synergies of its investment in ICT research and innovation. And that is why last March I proposed a renewed strategy for ICT research and innovation in Europe. Now, the objective is to enable Europe to lead ICT progress and to make the best use of ICT innovations. I give you some examples. To channel more resources into ICT research and innovation in Europe, this includes a more strategic use of pre-commercial public procurement, a better use of cohesion funds, and incentives to increase private research expenditures. The second example is to reduce the fragmentation of the ICT research and innovation efforts in Europe through better policy coordination, new public-private partnership. So we need to pull together substantial public and private research efforts and to tighter collaboration in planning new research infrastructures. And another example, to facilitate the takeoff of new EU-wide markets for innovative ICT products and services. Now, this means platforms for closer collaboration between the users and the producers, pilot actions to test innovations at a scalable level and to support interoperability. Moreover, we are also committed to support large-scale research projects that develop modern pan-European ICT-based service infrastructures and that address a key societal challenge like ICT for chronic and serious disease management, ICT for energy efficiency, and the development of a EU-wide electronic identity management infrastructure. Let me also give you another concrete example. Public-private partnerships for R&D have been launched this year in the context of the European Economic Recovery Plan. Here, software and ICT in general play a very important role. Again, some examples. Factories of the future a partnership on more agile manufacturing and energy efficiency, as well as optimized design and better process life cycle management. Or the energy efficient building, to improve energy efficiency for buildings through, for example, better monitoring, control of energy consumption, smarter and optimized interconnections with the power grids. Or last but not least, the green cars for developing fully electrical vehicles, battery management, power supply, control mechanisms, and so on and so forth. So you see, we really do a lot in that respect. The Truffle 100 is composed chiefly of SMEs that are creating value and qualified jobs. Year after year, they invest massively in research and development. R&D programs are considered to be one of the key drivers for growth. What actions do you intend to take to increase European spending in R&D? And can you give us a few figures? I fully agree with you. Europe is behind our main competitors in R&D spending. And to step up investments, actions are needed, both in the public 
and in the, pro the private side. Now on our side, the annual commitments to ICT in the research will increase from 1.1 billion in 2010 to 1.7 billion in 2013. And member states have been invited to match this budget increase also in their national programs. Last year, we have issued a communication on the pre-commercial procurements and we encourage the national authorities to engage in procuring ICT R&D. Pre-commercial procurement of ICT to modernize public services, for example, is today heavily underutilized in Europe. It represents less than 1 billion in the EU against more than 10 billion in the US. We have also established joint technology initiatives under the research program. These mean to speed up innovation, to share technology development strategies, to pool resources in the field of embedded computing systems and nanoelectronics. In the near term, it is our intention to establish a public-private partnership in the field of future Internet. An essential characteristics of such a partnership should be to develop open, standardized, cross-sector service platforms, leveraging the Internet infrastructures for building networked applications. Unlike their US counterparts, the vast majority of SMEs find it too difficult and complicated to access the European R&D programs. They often have very little resources to dedicate and are reluctant to get involved in the process because they think the administrative work is too important and the process is too lengthy, while the chances of getting through are indeed very low. What set of actions could you take so as to redirect more of the R&D to the small vendors who need it the most and will create the most jobs? Well, today in the ICT part of our research programs, we support per year more than 2,000 European high innovative SMEs. The analysis shows that those SMEs are very successful in exploiting community support and they bring new products to the market and enlarge their market share. And SMEs' participation in this research program has increased during the current Commission from 13% to 15%. In addition, under FP7, the funding of SMEs has increased from 50% to 75% of their current costs. And well, that is really a major step forward for the SMEs because it lightens the burden of finding the matching financing. Moreover, administrative burdens have been substantially reduced. For example, the collective financial responsibility of the beneficiaries has been abolished and the participants' guarantee fund has been introduced. This also reduces the submission of financial guarantees by beneficiaries and the number and extent of documents required from beneficiaries for ex-ante financial checking. Also, the number of audit certificates required has been reduced. Now, in addition, several electronic tools have been set up in the Commission services. I think about electronic submission of proposals unique registration facility for legal entities, and so forth. So also this speeds up the evaluation proposals or the negotiation process and the grant payments. Finally, guidelines on financial issues, certification of methodology and audit strategies have been published, and this enhanced the legal certainty. In the very near future, additional steps will be proposed for instance, on the definition of flat rates and lump sums for, budget, uh, for major budget items like personal cost. Moreover, in 2010, the Commission plans to issue a communication on possibilities for simplifying the implementation of the EU framework programmes. All this will, of course, majorly help the SMEs.